Okay, so now we're gonna send, set up the ambient occlusion. So let's go back into relationship or rendering editors, hypershade. And so we're gonna set up a simple network, which is gonna be a surface shader, which we will call AL surface shader. I guess it's a little bit confusing. Let's just call it that. And then we go into mental ray textures and mean inclusion. We created this and now what we're gonna do is middle click on this guy, drag and then and then drop here and then do connect default. And that's gonna, it already knows that, you know, normally if you're connecting an ambient occlusion shader to a surface shader, you're gonna go from the out value of this to the out color of the, of the shader. So that's basically all there is to it. <laughs> and then we can set the samples and figure out the quality right here. So we'll just leave it there at 16 to see the difference. Um, Initially, sorry, I just lost my hypershade. We still want to um, select everything. Let's make sure we're in the right layer and in the right render layer. So we're in the AO. So you can see the AO. And then it's like we've lost our. Did we not assign that to anything? Did we lose that? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I don't, I don't know how you add things to the work area, but you should be able to just select something and then put it there. Anyway, figure that out later. Um, we're gonna select these guys in that liner. Uh, let's just close this guy so we have so we can see. The outliner. This is tricky. Okay, I'm just trying to get this so we can see it. Okay. So we select this, 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 and this. And then we say apply, assign material to selection. All right. So now we should see in this layer Still looks good. This layer looks like this. And I think we're done with the hypershade for now, so we can close that. I think it's easier to work <laughs> when you can see things. So let's go back to this layer, position the camera, and you know, let's try to get like an interesting angle here. Um, so we can kind of see some of the shadows. No, maybe that's fine. <laughs> maybe that's <laughs> my mouse. Yeah, this just for the record, this mouse is has a, a weird uh, middle button combination, middle button scroll behavior. So okay. So now let's see how the rendering looks. We're currently only rendering this guy, so let's swap those and then go here. Okay, so we have a render, so you can see the bottom there, um, looks good, uh, but not that high quality. <laughs> so that's where the, that's where this kind of number of samples comes in. And so what we can do is go in here select anything. There's lots of ways to get back to those, um, get back into the actual surface shader. Um, so I can just go in via here <laughs> and get to that. I could have also opened this hypershade and clicked on it and then double clicked on it from the workspace to get here. So let's just bump up the samples to 64 and then redo our render.
and it looks a bit smoother. So we can keep this image, go down to eight. Obviously it's gonna be higher, uh, higher speed for less quality. We can keep this one and then if we, we can see the difference between those. So I like them pretty high quality, nice and smooth. So there's this. Um, so we go up to 128, and then another thing we can do is go into quality of the, the mental ray. And go from draft up to production. And then see what that looks like. Obviously slower. Okay, so you can see low quality and if you do one to one, some of the aliasing goes away. All right, so I think what we wanna do now is go back into the render layers and re-enable this. And then I think our options are actually fine. We want to composite and keep layers. And then what we should do is we render the software <laughs> one that was super fast. And now we're getting the slower ambient occlusion. Because this is checked red right here, it's redoing it even though it just rendered the same frame. I think it would try to reuse it if that was green. So we can go into our files, so into our project folder under images, and we can see these, these files that were just created. And the last thing I think we need to do is actually set the output settings. So we actually want to save this as a layer PSD. Let's see if it'll actually register. There we go. I wonder if this works. <laughs> Let me just try that really quick. Uh, no, I better force it to redo. Here. We should probably turn down the settings while we're testing this. Great, looks good, looks promising. All right, cool. So, miraculously, <laughs> this actually worked. So we have the ambient occlusion layer, and then we have the surface shader, and then there's this background that doesn't seem to, to really do anything. Um, well, actually it does something, it's just it's just blocked. So all we need to do is say multiply and we get these guys together and then I like to turn this down to say 75 and we get a nice pretty easy setup and looks pretty good. Um, yeah for this one it doesn't, I mean it it's not as cool to see the kind of candy cane structure on a single color. So um, for that one, you know, I might 
I might render like another layer where this is just not, it's not the, it's not one of the objects that the tune shader is applied to. So let's, let's try to do that. Um, so let's save our work. So example, one, save. And under here, so I think what we do is we select the orange bundle and then we go into tune and remove current tune outlines. I think that's right. Okay, yeah. So now if we render, which is interesting, that's not. Let me just check if we composite and keep layers. I'm just curious why it's not keeping those files in there, but maybe I won't worry about that. Let's see what we see here. So it's creating those tutorial IFF files. In fact, it already did the AO. Yeah, these scenes still kind of look ugly, but not too bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay.